Welcome to the Crucial Classics Bring Your Own Copy series, where what we do is watch movies together. We are going to watch all of the biggest titles from that golden age of Hollywood. So join me as we will sync up, press play at the same time, and let's just enjoy the magic from this golden age of Hollywood. To crucial classics if this is your first time here welcome take a look at our channel plenty of content for you to binge if you love old movies you've landed in the right spot what we do on this channel is watch them together from start to finish let's look at the wall it's decorated like this because old movies are important for the past 32 years i just have to say i guess i'm going to be a little bit of a hater right now um i'm constantly on youtube last night a channel a movie reaction channel was like recommended in my feed right i'm a movie reaction channel i took a look at what they do on these other channels people it is so like not fulfilling they and i don't know how they get away with it they should not get away with it um they show the copyrighted movie with audio on the screen, full screen, for a couple of seconds. Then they pull, you know, that clip off, put themselves back on. But and then they chop throughout the movie, right? So they condense a two-hour-long movie down into a 35-minute-ish clip video of themselves. It's just, it was so odd to me. But yet, of course, we know. Those are the takeoff channels. Those are the hundreds of thousands of subscribers, hundreds of thousands of views. And they watch more current day movies, which I'm never getting into that because they're kind of crap compared to what we are connoisseurs of. But um, so that, just being a little bit of a hater, but distinguishing what we do here on this channel is we watch the whole movie from start to finish. Today's title, tonight's title, is a first time watch for me and I'll tell you how I came across it. I came across it because I was looking up something else. But yeah, it's just like, yes, yeah, so my videos are the full length of the movie plus a little bit of an intro, a little bit of an outro. Um, I do the research of sharing with you over on my sister Pinterest page. The locations where we all have the ability to just push play and watch the movie at the exact same time in sync from start to finish. I'm not force feeding you. I'm not chopping, dicing, slicing, using copyrighted material that is extremely protected. And you know, guys, it was this year, there was some type of a Supreme Court case about this fair use. I guarantee you every one of those videos that those other channels put up, they have to go to a, like a back screen within YouTube and give their little testimony of why they are not violating copyright because they're doing fair use by showing the content you can go through that process and then the copyright owner can kind of come back and or a different copyright owner it's just people all of those channels I know that I sound like I'm a hater but I got it from one of those channels saying hey send out thoughts and prayers for a sister channel you know channel is exactly what I'm doing hundreds of thousands of subscribers just got her channel taken away just like that so you know it's like it's really a risky venture that would be so painful to lose a big channel like that that many views on your videos and just in a split second it's all gone so we do it right over here we do it protected our channel should not be going anywhere <laughs> okay and we watch classic films so watch the movie with me on one screen too so let me just go a little bit more through the intro stuff um ways to do it you can take this video of me in one tab your copy of the movie and another and they'll lock side by side into two tabs pull the movie tab to take up more of your screen then you're setting that up on your computer screen take an hdmi cable plug it into your tv one screen your biggest screen you can do if you have access to if it's available if it's working on your video of me here in youtube there is a play on TV, picture in picture option, shrinks me, floats me. It's always the ideal that you're watching me in the corner, movie full screen, and just me in the corner of the movie. So that's the way that you would set that up. Um, there's a runtime timer in the corner here, hour, minute, second. That's my playback of the movie. Same exact runtime. You guys all have the access to push play on that with me. And just make sure that your playback of the movie is at this location and that's how we're in perfect sync so what else yeah the place where i give you the um 
information about where the film is available is over on my sister Pinterest page. There's always a link in the description of the videos. It takes you straight over to a board that I make for every movie we watch. Consider that board the equivalent of the wall of my room. I fill it up with pictures just from the film. And it's like the first or second thing that you can see gives you the information you need. So, okay, that's what we do on the channel. Um, I was going to watch two movies and I don't know that I'm going to get to it because the second, the, the when that I was going to watch, I'm kind of like, eh, you know, meh, but I had a feeling that you guys might really kind of be waiting for it. Um, will, it'll eventually get on the channel. I'm just not, I wasn't overly excited about it right now. So then I was like, all right, I'm going to watch that, but also because I'm going to watch this one. And I started looking up The Public Enemy. I have seen that. One time, more recently on my little rabbit ears channel, one time they were playing it and I was just like, I feel like I'm barely on the screen. I was like, I don't really kind of care um, that I'm not gonna watch this with you guys. <laughs> I'm gonna watch it myself because it was the first time I had seen it. And what I would say is I loved the editing of that movie. It was from the 19, early 1930s, early talkies. The editing of that thing, it came in just barely over an hour, but they just were moving it along, but it didn't feel rushed. I just loved the transitions between the scenes. So I was like, I know I really remembered enjoying watching that film. So I was looking it up and then somehow, I did, the universe picked the movie that we're watching tonight. Just out of nowhere, I'm looking up the public enemy and popped up in results, Angels with Dirty, whatever we're watching today. I don't even know the title of the movie people because it's a first time watch for me. I clicked on the Wikipedia article for it and I was just reading that very intro paragraph because I'm not, I didn't want to spoil any part of what the plot is, but it was a little sentence. A lot of people regard this as one of the greatest movies of all time and I was like, oh damn. Well how dare I not have more James Cagney on this channel. We have him in The Roaring Twenties. Is that the only thing that we have him in on this channel? I think it is people. I don't think we have another James Cagney entry on this channel. And I had such an amazing experience watching him in that. That probably is the one and only title that we have him in. And I'm telling you guys throughout that he is the baddest MF in the movies, huh? <laughs> in, in that movie. Um, Humphrey Bogart is also with him, who is a close second. Guys, I am watching The Treasure of Sierra Madre every single day. It's one of my very first movies in the morning as I'm doing my work. And Humphrey Bogart, to me, more since I've started this channel. I've never watched so much of his content since I started this channel. And it's just like, he's the overall package. I would almost have to give him best actor of all time. Humphrey Bogart just delivers. And he's a man's man. I've been watching him so much in the Maltese Falcon. It was my first time ever watching that here for the channel. And it's just, he's everything. Oh my gosh, he's hot in a way that just makes you question. You're like, what? But he is, right? And he's tough and he's down to earth. So. He's supposedly in this movie too. This is from 1938. So here was the backstory. Cagney, I guess, was for a long time at Warner, just like Humphrey Bogart. But we know if this is in 38, Humphrey Bogart hasn't made it big yet. He's just a character actor over there. He's standing out in his performances. That's, it's like, I don't understand how it took, basically we've learned on this channel since High Sierra, for him to break out. Hi Sierra was really like critically acclaimed box office results and from there he gets to make the Maltese Falcon and from Maltese Falcon he's the legend Humphrey Bogart that he is till today. 38 though we're not gonna must be paying much attention to him in this movie definitely Cagney would be the established kind of what Bogart becomes regarded as as well. He's at Cagney has been at Warner they're having some type of a contract dispute though. I guess this was interesting. They were saying that Cagney's problem with Warner was that he wasn't getting enough of the cut from the profits of the movie. Now, Cary Grant, I know, was one of the very first actors a lot farther off in his career that started negotiating getting profit from the movie, right? Like however much money the movie makes, I'm getting a percentage of that. 
So I don't, that was really throwing me off when I was reading that about Cagney, but that was the way it was reading. They, I guess maybe more what it was saying is like how well his movies were performing at the box office. They were keeping his salary beneath that. It wasn't, is it commensurate? <laughs> Whatever the word, you know, it wasn't equal. I think that was probably more what they were saying because it was, just, they were talking about profit of the movie and I'm like, oh, he was getting a percentage of the take. Back in this early days, no, people were not. I promise you, Carrie was one of the first that thought to negotiate that for himself. So at a point, he leaves. Cagney leaves Warner, and he goes to this basically brand new, very small, like a little independent, I feel like they were calling it Grand National or something, uh, studio. I would say it's probably like the equivalent of that Republic studio that John Wayne's movies are always coming out of where I'm seriously asking by the time that they do Quiet Man, is he an owner over there? Anyway, Cagney comes over to this smaller studio, but of course he's gonna be the biggest star there. So like basically all of their budget is for whatever he's gonna do. They're trying to continue kind of his portrayals. Tough guy, he wants to break out of that. They splurged. They said it was like a $900,000 budget back in 38-ish, 37 maybe. They did some kind, maybe it was a musical, kind of like Yankee Doodle -Land Dandy. I was talking to you guys on the 4th of July, like I just saw Yankee Doodle Dandy today. Why is he giving footwork comparison to Gene Kelly? Like this guy was really well-rounded and I definitely don't know enough of James Cagney's um, catalog. So he did a movie, I'm thinking kind of in that vein for them, $900,000 budget. It doesn't perform very well at the box office. That basically, it tanks that whole entire studio. They file for bankruptcy, so he's kind of like, all right, he works his way back over to Warner and negotiates better terms for himself. He manages to be able to get this movie because this other little studio was trying to get Cagney to make this movie with them, I guess it was too similar to the portrayals he's been doing since Public Enemy 1931, right? He wanted to break out of that mold, but he takes the story with him over to Warner, they buy it, they're trying to shop it around. We get Curtis is the director, we know that's the guy from Casablanca. I feel like that's about the movie that we have him directing on this channel too. So it's Cagney, I heard them say, I don't know. I don't even know this man's name, but they said, I guess he's playing a father or something. That's as much as looking up the story that I got into. But I know he's in this movie with George Brent, Merle Oberon, Till We Meet Again or something like that. I found that movie, people were gonna watch it. We're gonna watch it. But if you guys have seen it, you love that movie. It's rare, they don't hardly ever play it, but it's so good. That was where, we're just watching From Here to Eternity and I told you that they show Hawaii in that movie with Merle Oberon and George Brent and this man that is playing, I guess, a priest in this movie. Um, we've got Humphrey Bogart. They said he's a shyster lawyer. I shouldn't have read these little details. But then also these dead end kid, dead end gang kids or whatever, the little coverones that are in that movie with Humphrey Bogart, um, dead end. Um, I guess there's some other movie that they made with Humphrey Bogart and they had a, I guess the whole little gang, they're literally called a gang, this is the name of their little clique. <laughs> they got a contract um, at Warner and then Warner cut their contract because they were such little punks. I guess in Dead End they were saying that like they um, harassed Humphrey Bogart, like they they effed him up, <laughs> they took his pants, but they like jumped him, they said they jumped him. And then they also like crashed a car into something on the soundstage. They were little punks for real. So, but I guess they're in this movie too. So that's all that I know. I didn't know. Oh, and maybe Anne Sheridan is in this movie. And we found out she was married to George Brent for a couple of years. Um, so anyway, I know nothing about this movie except for those little extraneous details. Um, yeah, let me get it queued up. We'll both push play on it together. First time watch for me. Regarded as one of the best movies of all time. I would understand that. And um, yeah, let's get started. Okay, hour 3718 runtime. This is really weird too. When I was reading the background on this, they said it's a noir. Noir isn't really 
considered to be established this far back in the game. Although, you know what I mean? It's like, I feel like more nowadays that we kind of have a definition of noir. There's several things prior to the official. It's like around 40s plus is when noir kind of is officially recognized. But then I guess we were, oh, well, that had, you know, shadings of noir in it. So anyway, like that's what they were called. Pat O'Brien, I see that's the guy's name. All right, playing in three, two, one. There we go. Great sound. Oh, wow, see? Humphrey Bogart isn't over the title. That's, it is what it is, people. I'm in, I'm gonna be really studying Humphrey in this because, well, George Bancroft? No. And Sheridan, who's George Bancroft? I was thinking if that was um, Raft, George Raft. Huh? No, it's not. I don't know who George Bancroft is then. But anyway, yeah, if Humphrey Bogart had Max Steiner, that makes sense. Did we see Ori Kelly? Not yet, but there he is, Ori Kelly. Photography is by Saul Bolito. You know what? I feel like he did High Sierra. Harding nominated for something physical. Okay. Wow. How far back is this? Damn. This is like what they would call a tenement slum, right? I mean, it just, it is what it is. Is this like in the early 1900s? There's these kids. They had movies. They'll sneak in. Uh, yeah, don't talk to him. is fresh. They look disgustingly dirty. They're coming down. They're gonna hit this girl? Does she have a brother? see how the little girls might like a bad boy but you ain't gonna be all filthy like that too oh they're gonna take the train to Florida Palm Springs oh they're gonna st well okay they're little criminals Do they get caught? I have never seen two seconds of this movie except for what I saw clicking to make sure it wasn't work. Okay, yes, they're gonna get caught. Oh, maybe not. This man didn't see them, huh? Or he did. Okay. I was gonna say, they don't have anything to hit them with. You would think they might have like tried to hit the cops or something. 
If they had some, then they would have tried to. Oh wow, they do get away? Are they gonna get hit by a train? Okay. Ah! Oh. oh my gosh! Okay, alright. Okay. Hmm. Alright, so now what? Okay. Guys, forever, this is where my dad worked. He did the maintenance for the state. Oh, he gets three meals a day. Where that kid? Really looks like James Cagney. I was wondering if it was going to squeal. Rat. That's a good friend. Okay, who wouldn't do it? Okay, so he gets sent away. Is it going to a school? Like, a reformed school, they make them do this type of stuff? Okay, well, is this something... This is just additional and additional shit that he keeps getting? Damn! He's just staying up in here, huh? They let him out for like two minutes and he goes, gets into something else and just keeps getting time. Huh? Liquor wrap. Oh, this is prohibition. Okay. Where are they shipping it to? <gasps> Why'd they free him? Because he did do manslaughter? Damn. Is this prohibition or no, that's done? Oh, he, he did. Oh, okay. Okay, you don't get killed, don't get smart. I mean, this was. Wow, he just stays. He's not reforming. Why are they showing all of these pages of this? for the 15th time. Why did they show us that paper so quickly? Here we are in exactly this neighborhood again. Okay, like 10, 15 years later. He's done like 15 years back to back to back. Isn't there a three strikes and you're out type of thing? Is it before that time? I mean, because you ain't gonna get manslaughter, get out, get back up in there, and the three strikes thing ain't starting to apply to your ass. The hell? So before it was the little crank thing, you no. Know? This is the music in the neighborhood. This is. Is his name Father Flanagan? Like, aren't. Ha <laughs> ha.
Pat O'Brien. Is Pat O'Brien in that movie with George Brennan and Merle Oberon? Oh, he's coming to church. Oh, he's out now after having done 15 years. Oh, he used to sing in the choir? I thought that him and his little cohort back in the day were the gang. How precious they have a young African-American man in this choir. That was not the dead end gang, right? That was two boys. Oh, really? They <laughs> just sing in the choir. Ah, ah, ah. Why does he do that? Does he know this father? That's the He was a, what? Baseball players? Yeah, this cut. Okay, is he, what, what are, they're just touching base? Yeah, he plays baseball. Hoodlums. Oh, I gotta get that money. Is he really gonna do that?
Okay, so he's not rooming at the church. Because uh, you, you know he is only about this crime, and he's going to be rooming at the church. Okay. And sure, looking pretty young. Oh, because he's been on the front page. <laughs> Okay, you know, damn. <laughs> well, damn, the keyhole is really low. <laughs> it's big. Oh, she knows who he is. Yeah, and it. <laughs> this I she said she'd get him back Ooh. <laughs> oh good for her this what do you hear what do you say thing he I guess is from Manhattan for not Manhattan I don't know it felt like it said Manhattan anyways from New York he said there used to be a drug dealer on the corner when he was grown up that used to say that. What do you hear? What do you say? I feel like he says he only does that about six times in this movie. And it becomes what he's known for. Like, he's always getting mimicked for it. Who's Jim Frazier? Um, Humphrey Bogart? This is... Is that Bogart has this club? Bogart did a heist with him, but said, oh, I can't turn myself in because then they're going to disbar me and we'll lose the 100000 that I got hidden. He said hidden in a safe somewhere, right? And the 100000 is his. That's Bogart has. He looks older and younger, huh? Bogart's looking different. Oh, yeah. He just did three years instead of this full, yeah. Oh, ended 
this. Uh-oh, he's only taking it up with him. Oh, and he don't have the 100,000 liquid, huh? Oh, here I go. Have the money. Alright, we'll connect with this dude. Where can you get established with him if he's in charge? Okay, why do they look at each other like that? Is he not going to take him home? He's a shyster. He's a shyster, for sure. Oh, this dude right here? <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, you're not going to take care of that on Cadme. I was like, are we flashing back? That looks like young James Cadme, but not quite. Why does he have this stick looking like he could hit the cop? Why are they taking a child? Mm-hmm. So are they coming up to Cagney's room? Oh, he's coming up to them. This is good. Ah, huh? they're gonna try and rob him or something? Give him the works. Yeah, they just pickpocketed him. He had $500. They got it. He thinks he doesn't need to worry about it because he's getting his 100 G's on Monday. Do these fools know they just got his 500? Okay, this is the little gang. <coughs> Although they don't look like the same kids as from that movie Dead End. Oh, that one was in that movie Dead End. How come they're not seeming to recognize that they got his $500 
Is that, um, or is that what they're going through right now? Okay, yes. It was what they were going through. He doesn't even, it's this. <laughs> We'll give it back then. <laughs> Seriously, like this in his pocket. <laughs> oh, he's like a rat though. Oh, that's gum. I'm like, what is he taking out? Oh, because he established it. He's going to show them things they didn't even know. <laughs> uh-huh. Is he going to further corrupt them? Right, yeah. Is he going to... A bite. Why is he staying in here? <laughs> stall all the rest of it. Ah, ah. <laughs> Gross. Okay, so he's mentoring the kids in crime and here comes the father. Big brothering them. Do they, um, know the father? Okay. But he's a father now. Ha, ha, ha. 
Why did he look... Why did James Cagney look like that? This dude's trying to assassinate him. <sighs> so good for him, huh, that he went with the father. I... Are they boxing or playing basketball? Oh, there's that girl. He wasn't going to hurt her. Does he have cane? Cane? Oh, sh she's a social... Oh, she just let him know she knew what was up. Dang, this is the way they play basketball back in the day. It's a very contact sport. Uh, foul, uh, flagrant fouls, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, now he gets to do his free throws. <laughs> Jeez, Louise. <laughs> Is this showing us the evolution of basketball? Do they not have fouls yet? Damn. <laughs> climb up there for so they play basketball like the little criminals that they are okay oh wow <laughs> what in the world oh that that was a foul finally <laughs> in his suit. Oh, he's going to referee. <laughs> ah! Okay. That's the way they play. That's how he's going to referee. Hmm. Well, not just his kind. Him. How come they have to start? He's always got to toss the ball up for him again. Ooh, 
ow, ow, damn. <laughs> Okay, you know why we have this scene for so long? Because it's these kids, this gang. Because, I mean, I'm over it now. Ah, <laughs> he's tripping. Ah. Why did he trip him? Because he has a bet huh, that they wouldn't win. He wants them to lose. He bet them like a dollar huh, that they couldn't beat the other team. <laughs> wow. Okay, foul. Oh my gosh. That's weird. That's weird to see them cleaning up. Yeah, they really need the shower. Does she have to wait for him? I got sunburned this week. It's been really hot. I go for walks on my lunch break and I've gotten but sunburned. Not just tan. Oh, a husband. Uh, he sees this dude, yeah. Mm. She, oh, was she nagging him? Yeah, he totally, I said, this dude is going to get it if he's trying to put something on Cagney. Oh, these other boys are here now, too. Huh? Damn. Okay, he sees that, too. Ah. This girl. Send her on her way, then, Cagney. There's a lot of them against James Cagney now. I knew one on one, but there's a lot of them against him. Oh, he can get a cherry. That sounds delicious. I was just, I don't drink soda in my house, but I had a 
a taste for cherry coke. There's all okay, so it's because of how many people are around that they're not just They are trying to eliminate Does he have a gun? For real? The way he's got his hand like that? So they said if they can get in the phone booth. That's how they're gonna get him? They're gonna shoot him from outside? Okay. Cagney, you don't have to be on the phone just because somebody called you and now you don't hear anybody. <gasps> okay. Never mind. <laughs> oh! Get in there deep, he said. Okay, so these... Mm, 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 mm. Okay. Well, that's what you get, right? Reap what you sow. Oh, yeah, okay. He had a gun. Yes. He didn't do anything. He was self-defending himself, and he didn't hurt anybody. She was worried if that was Rocky him. They don't even know what he looks like. But he, Cagney knows that Bogart set that up. Huh? Who's driving? Cagney pulled right up. money, huh? Shoot, that's your only chance of surviving. Where is it? I mean, it's clearly up in that club, but all right, okay. Oh, you gonna be 98k short? Damn. gonna see what there is. I, yeah, he'll, he'll see what it is. <laughs>
<laughs> That's cool back in the day, huh? He's, he's the one hearing what's going on, and bitch, you say what I tell you to say. <laughs> oh, shoot. There's a lot of people in, in here. Yeah. They got it. That's what a hundred grand looks like in cash. Who's Fraser? Is that, um, Humphrey Bogart is Fraser? Yeah, why does anybody care about what happens to him? Again, um, that's Bogart. What a weird picture that is, huh? Where is Fraser? He really has him somewhere? In his room here? They don't know that he stays here? Or they do? Why did he get this kid involved? Oh, was that was the cops that just came in? They're gonna let this kid fly by. gonna go put it in that little hideout uh, in the little um slot machine why he doesn't have to worry about anything so far really he hasn't gotten himself into anything illegal really I mean where's Frazier He's on, definitely on parole for the rest of his life. Many times as he's been in the funny pages, the cartoons, the comics. Wow, they just get to come up into his place like this? Oh, they uh, said that he has Frasier, uh, but he's not in the garbage can. <laughs> like, why are they not looking harder for this dude? <laughs> For real. What no, yeah. Did the man that called the police tell them 
that he had a hundred thousand dollars on him. He, I heard him say Fraser. And don't open it. So, where is he now, though? Is he no longer with us? He should be entitled to a lawyer. Oh, yeah, no. Well, are you going down now to be his lawyer? Well, are they on this fool's payroll? I'm saying, why do they move so much just because he makes phone calls over to them? He's a boy. Uh, they have it. Well, he was not playing about how hard he hit that, okay? <laughs> <laughs> the one in the back, look at how he's kind of hanging back. 
What's it gonna do him any good to squeal? Because full, he was legit. He was. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. There's quite a few too many of these young punks that they obviously in real life were, and. Um, they lost their contract with the Warner Brothers for doing too much real shit on the set. Oh, he put in this hundred G's. Just in the bed post. Well, he got his money out. Is he blowing town? What is he staying around for? With that much money. Oh, the papers. Just stay out of it, it'll be safer for you. Mm. But Fraser's back. What did he just see? Why was the father leaving so cautiously like that? <laughs> Why? Oh, so they're hustling in the pole hall now. <laughs> they all got his little suits. That's the one, though, that just did it. That's probably going to say something. Is he trying to snatch him up? Oh, okay, 
Okay, so a lot of them are the good kids. Okay. That was too easy. I was like, that's not this little gang. Okay, Father, they're a lost cause. I mean... Um. Why is she still in his room? But he's alive. Is she nervous? <laughs> oh, he's in there. That's stupid. his account hmm. so they're going to try and get him again but he owns it Who runs our city, yeah. Hmm. 
A donation. Oh, wow. Oh, his little gym. His future rec center. He won't take it, or he will. Oh, Rocky moved into the club. And Anne Sheridan is there too. Forced Fraser. Oh, we yeah. are. <laughs> Such a legend. Angels with dirty faces. Oh, uh, he's saying if he takes the money. Corrupting the children, Rocky. Yeah, it quit corrupting the children. Um, a father, yeah, I mean, James Cagney just said that you're not going to make any um, inroads on this little project that you're undertaking. I mean, he literally has a notebook with everybody's names in it. Oh, well, he's going to the New York Times. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but he's really trying hard, though.
what are so, okay. Rocky. Well, I mean, okay. I think we missed. Yeah, Fraser. Okay, is this going to turn into Dodge City? Yeah. She's with Rocky, too. Oh, I was going to say, is it going to turn into Dodge City where somebody on the newspaper is going to get taken out? Mm. Why? Okay. This is getting to be a lot. Is that Rocky? Oh, Frazier. Oh. Oh, dang. He's got the politicians. Oh, damn. He said he's going to get him in indicted. taken up the father
Okay. See, Cagney, yeah. The, you ain't gonna be winking even out of the other eye right in front of him, and he didn't. He knew, you know. He knew. Okay. If that preacher doesn't have the accounts, he's not a preacher, he's a priest. Does he have a... Oh, you're too late. Huh? Did Rocky get shot? shot at the bar. <laughs> he kept going all the way up to the bar to get the phone and now he realized he was shot. What was that? Well, he got rid of the first dude, too. Um, <clears throat> oh, she was there at the club. She works there at the club. in the area doing their little broadcast uh oh uh oh uh oh Rocky um watch out now He saw that. Oh, they just did like a little smoke bomb, stink bomb. <laughs>
Well, I mean, you guys already tried to do that. I mean, how many bullets does he have in this gun? Okay, they hadn't already given him that. I got this one gun. I'm, I've seen two in the blue that have gone down from his one little gun. Oh, he has two guns. Okay. Let me get on the bullhorn to him. to you um at this point so <sighs> Cagney kind of moves like a dancer when there's been several times that you've just seen him kind of walking through and he's it's kind of whatever he's doing with his arms. It makes his little moves in Yankee Doodle Dandy make more sense. I would like to look that up about him. Like if he was like a trained dancer. <laughs> There's a scene in that Yankee Doodle Dandy. He's on the stage. He's doing all this fancy footwork. He runs up to the wall, climbs the wall, flips up. It's like, what in the world? Oh, here comes the father up into the tear gas. You know what, father? I don't know that he's still listening to you, though. I mean, you talked all kinds of shit about how you were going to get him indicted, and then you played that out. It really was Frazier's stuff. He was until he stepped in. So now he's taken him hostage. Does he have any more bullets in these guns though? What in the world? He's coming down to this door to open it, but thinks he's getting away. Well, he knows as many times as he's been in jail. is he going to be able to get away to? Damn. Yeah, there were no more bullets left. <sighs> oh! 
พูดไว้ได้ยังเสียจะไม่ฟังเลยครับเอ็ดส์ตัวจริงพ่อของเขาทำไมเขาใส่เสื้อแบบนี้นะเพราะว่าเขาอยู่ในที่ตายMessed up, dude. Where's the father? Okay, well, there is about the sixth time that he said that. What? Okay, what is your favor? Yeah, father. This is interesting. I did in the research or I saw this part that he didn't want to play a role where he would go to the chair yellow let them down
Okay, this is, I mean, hmm. Yeah, that's right on. Why was this pant? <clears throat> Why is this pant like that? Are we going to, are they showing us stuff like they did in, um, I want to live? with Susan Hayward. Because this is an electrical situation. I mean, if he's gonna do what the father asked him to do, how is this gonna get reported on that these boys are gonna be able to read about it in the paper? I mean, who's here to um, talk shit? About him. Yeah, I mean, father. The father has done the most in the name of righteousness, huh? Oh, there are. Okay, here's there are the people that can say something. He's, um, a short man, huh? Just say. But he is the baddest MF, too. I mean, it's, the height is not, it, but he's just right there. You got a little bit of context. Does the father knock him out? They said that in real life, James Cagney was friends with somebody that actually had this fate. So he drew upon that. Yeah, okay. This is the father. No, it's true, boys. Okay, so now, Father, are you, after all of that shit, are you going to be like, no, I made him feel like he was not going to get right with God unless he did that? Father, if you lie... Come to the gym.
Is this the very end of the movie right here? Mac Kiefer is George Bancroft. I had seen him before. Okay, so some of these little... The gang have their own little names. Okay, they all have credits. Well, those little boys singing in the choir were really good, so they were a real little choir. Okay. Well, okay, we've seen it. It's definitely not like... One of the top, they said it's ranked number 67, top 100 best film noirs. I feel like that's where I got that reference to film noir. Um, it was too much. The father did the most, and the father laughed. You know what, um, mm -mm. I got, I'm just thinking about James Cagney. I think he does more um, in the Roaring Twenties. Uh, he goes out like really, really hard in the Roaring Twenties. He wasn't quite so tough in this, right? I mean, he was. He was tough. He, but not as tough as we've seen him in some other stuff. So we'll, we've seen him. This is only the second thing, I guess, that I've seen him. We'll get the public enemy. Let's keep studying. Um, but, yeah, he's definitely dynamic. Like and subscribe. We will see you on the weekends. Thank you so much. See you later. Bye-bye. Thank you guys so much for watching this movie with me. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Hey. Hit that thumbs up button for me, especially if you're hearing my voice saying this right now. <laughs> you watched to the end. Um, go ahead and subscribe. Turn on your notifications so you can always be aware of our newest titles to watch together. See you next time.